It is Thursday, March 5th, 2020. I'm your LV, and these are the Cryptosphere's top stories for today. South Korea passes a new law amendment legalizing cryptocurrency tradings and holdings in the country. The community rejoices after India's Supreme Court ruling to nix the crypto trading ban. And later, today's Bitcoin troll of the day is slated to be the United Kingdom's chief banker. South Korea's National Assembly just passed an amendment marking the official entry of cryptocurrency trading and holding into the legal system. The Special Financial Transactions Information Act will effectively create a framework for the country's cryptocurrency industry. The crypto-specific portions of the bill are based on the FATF's guidelines about how governments should police what it terms as virtual assets service providers and will be signed into the law books after a year-long enactment process. For more details on this remarkable move and what it may mean for the industry, I'm joined by Block TV senior correspondent Asher Westrup Evans. Asher, hello. Uh, first of all, Asher, does this move elevate South Korea to the forefront of crypto regulation? Well, certainly, Yael, it takes away any of the legal gray space that had surrounded crypto trading in South Korea. Up until now, while uh, South Korea was perceived by many as one of the leading leading countries alongside Japan when it came to cryptocurrencies. Now with this new law passing, they will be FATF compliant as soon as the rollout is complete. It will allow uh, South Korea effectively to take charge wholesale in a country where up until recently estimates were that on average Gen X's and, uh, owned $11,000 worth of cryptocurrencies on average across the entire country. So this really is an embracing wholesale of a country that was already largely on board. But interesting to note, this particular law was delayed in passing through uh, the Korean parliament, not just because uh, of uh, sort of ongoing political movements, but also due to in part to the coronavirus, uh, which caused a delay in a lot of legislation coming through Korean uh, government. But it's certainly a, a powerful move and uh, not just a symbolic one, but an actual real regulatory right. move in the East Asian country. That's going to make a dent actually in the process. Now, this is coming in the heels of another remarkable decision yesterday in India. Um, and is this break breakthrough, do we think that the break breakthrough is going to come through Asia, not just Corona, of course? <laughs> Certainly. I mean, look, uh, these breakthroughs across Asia, as we see, we saw yesterday from the Reserve Bank of India, as we're seeing today uh, from South Korean lawmakers, really is an important step and, and critical in uh, sort of showing how Asia is leading the charge when it comes to cryptocurrencies, digital asset technologies, and particularly in that regulation space. It puts them in the driver's seat uh, and lets them be sort of, I suppose, the test chambers uh, in terms of making this asset class more legitimized and more regulated. As Europe uh, comes on board uh, a little bit more slowly, but still making movements, the US is definitely being left behind uh, in that degree. And as I said, it does really leave uh, much of Asia in the driver's seat. Entirely so. Asha Rostrup Evans, thank you for this report. Well, it's being hailed as the most significant development in the cryptosphere this year, an opportunity to onboard 1.6 billion people who were barred from the market by the Indian government. Block TV's Aron Spitzer has the detail and reactions and predictions following the Indian Supreme Court's landmark ruling yesterday to strike down a ban on cryptocurrency trading. The cryptocurrency industry won big after the Supreme Court of India struck down a decision made by the country's own central bank nearly two years ago to ban banks from offering any services to support digital currencies. By all accounts, this is a positive move forward for the crypto industry. India is a software superpower and it deserves a significant place in the uh, overall uh, blockchain uh, you know, community uh, globally and I think this will also provide a major push in that direction. Crypto Twitter was also loud and proud. YouTuber Ivan on Tech wrote, India removes crypto ban. Almost 2 billion people are now able to buy Bitcoin. Supreme Court has successfully protected personal liberty in India. Super bullish. Binance CEO CZ chimed in as well. Yesterday, Binance went live with Turkey's largest bank. Today, Supreme Court of India tells Reserve Bank of India to stop banning crypto businesses thanks to the hard work of industry players pushing for adoption. News publications are also calling this a victory. CNN boasted the Supreme Court strike down. Bloomberg highlighted the win, and Quartz India reported this as cryptocurrency being able to thrive as policymakers can harness the tech to flourish. Local crypto businesses are already feeling the positive impact of this decision. Matic Network saw its native token surge 35% since the news broke, and crypto exchange Wazir X's native token had completed a four-day 125% price increase. 
Will larger corporations now be inclined to harness the potential of the Indian market? Businesses or the large corporates who wanted to do in this uh, do something in this space, they were very wary due to these uncertain uh, regulations. And now I think this strong backing of uh, Supreme Court provides them a very good uh, kind of uh, you know uh, um, uh, you know kind of morale or you can say encouragement that if they had some plans to do something in the space, they are you know free to do. The next logical step would be creating constructive regulation for the crypto industry in India. Bitcoin enthusiasts have a new toy to play with in the form of a powerful router courtesy of HTC. Resident tech reviewer Jonah Hochhauser is here with us with the specs. How exciting is this? Uh, <laughs> depending. I'll first give you the specs, then I'll give you why I think it's not the most exciting. So it's you called do. the HTC 5G Hub, which you guessed is a hub for 5G. Pretty much it is a device, a touchscreen device with a five inch yeah. screen that pretty much it connects to the 5G networks that are, if you're in America, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, etc., And you're able to connect up to 20 devices around your house to this hub to get those fast 5G speeds but these devices don't need to be 5G, they're connected through this hub. So right now, there are not a lot of 5G devices. This is a great way, they're pitching it as a replacement for your Wi-Fi router at home. Okay, and it is comp it's powerful. It has a Snapdragon 855 processor, four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of on an onboard storage, but- You're getting me excited. But <laughs> okay. I am very skeptical of this device because the problem with 5G is that you have to be very close to a 5G uh, antenna in order to work. So at that point, you might as well just use the Wi-Fi in your house. But because this is the crypto sphere, we like to tie everything into us. Uh, all the crypto uh, media is pitching us as, hey, you know what you're also allowed to do on this hub? You're able to run a Bitcoin node. And everyone's making a big hubbub about you're able to use this as a Bitcoin node. I am skeptical. <laughs> Why am I skeptical? Because in order to run a full Bitcoin node, first you have to download the Bitcoin blockchain, right. which right now is at 195 gigabytes. And then estimates to just to run the actual node, once you already downloaded it, just to run it is up to 200 gigabytes of data upload a month with 20 gigabytes download a month. Now, I don't know about your phone plan, but using up to 400 to 500 gigabytes Ooh. seems like a lot to put on your da phone Slightly. data plan. I am skeptical that people will put their Bitcoin node on their phone data plan. One last question. Are you skeptical? Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but Yona, thank you so much for this report. A new partnership in the crypto space promises to take fan tokens to the next level. Chili's, the Ethereum-based sports tokenization platform, announced a partnership with blockchain platform Chainlink to allow for real-time non-fungible token creation. For more on the partnership and what it means, I'm joined by none other than Block TV's Zach Hennessy. Skeptical? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. You got Chili's. They're the, they're the company behind the sports voting blockchain application, Socios.com, which you mentioned, right. which essentially allows uh, fans to follow their teams and to, to have more of a, of a say in what they're doing with their teams in terms of goal songs, jerseys, etc. So what they're doing now is they partner with Chainlink and their goal is to create a platform that will allow for essentially uh, NFTs to be minted uh, in limited amounts in response to real-time events. What does this mean? So the example that they give in the Medium post where they explain this is the idea that maybe uh, your favorite player scores a hat trick during a game. Okay. So now there are you know X amount of tokens related to that event. event. And uh, now you have a collectible associated with that wonderful sports event that you are uh, you know, such a fan to see. So it's, uh, it's really a great opportunity for, for players who are, who are looking for that kind of thing. Um, and this just adds to, to Chili's and, and all of their blockchain sports endeavors, which they've really been uh, focusing on. And right now, it seems to me that they are very much at the forefront of sports and blockchain. Right. It seems like they're rolling out a bunch of stuff just to make this. Right. And it is exciting. In a way. Absolutely. And it's a, especially a very exciting time to be a sports fan and also a blockchain fan. You've got more companies who are uh, you know, working on getting stuff going in, in the blockchain sphere. You've got Dapper Labs partnering with NBA Top right. Shot and UFC. And you've got uh, Tops, the the baseball card company, now doing garbage pail kids stuff with uh, with Wax, the Worldwide right. Assets Exchange. So it's really a fantastic time to be into the sports collectibles. So we'll see how this goes from here. Amen to that, Zachy Hennessy. Thank you so much for the support. Yay! It's time for Troll of the Day, and today a new face singing a stale tune. Asha Westrop Evans. Who is bashing Bitcoin today? Uh, so, Niel, and the fact you mentioned singing will be pertinent to this particular troll. So, Andrew Bailey, the incoming governor of the Bank of England, has decided to troll the crypto industry as a whole. Let's take a look.
If you want to buy Bitcoin, be prepared to lose all your money. Yeah. Um, if you want to buy it, fine, but you know, un understand what you've got. It has no intrinsic value. It may have extrinsic value, but it has no intrinsic value. Now, given that the UK is looking to designate itself as a hub of innovation after Brexit is done, perhaps ignoring and ridiculing emerging tech isn't the best approach. But don't let that stop you, Governor Bailey. Always remember, rule Britannia, Britannia rule the waves. Britons never, never, never shall be slaves, except to their monetary policy. I just want to state for the record, you're Australian. Thank you. I'm Shabastrup Evans. That was Around the Block for today. Thank you for watching. For more blockchain tech and cryptocurrency news, visit us at blocktv.com where Asher sings. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.